Mr. Campos, this is not an audition, and I've already got the job. Got it? Got it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the verdicts that had Judge Judy's litigants and all viewers completely caught off guard. There's no question you... I thought he hit car, me. No. Then, <laughs> no. This is news to me. Number 10. Defamation of character. Plaintiff Elena Menz sued her former boss, Bartholomew Ben Israel, for unpaid work. The judge awarded her partial money, but that was just the first part. The defendant filed a countersuit for defamation after Menz alleged he sexually harassed her. Um, she, she put on social media that um, I fire women who don't take my sexual advances and I... Oh, different her... story. Oh, that's a different story. Now, now we're talking business. Longtime viewers know Judge Judy's standards for things like defamation is incredibly high. But at the last moment, it came out that the plaintiff had lied about the defendant sending her risque pics. And so she went to my page, tucked the pictures off, and then sent it to herself as if I'm sending her messages. You mean setting up this case? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, that's what she did. Menz had actually just pulled them from his social media and pretended they were sent to her. When the judge sussed out her agenda, she rescinded that initial verdict in the plaintiff's favor. Okay. You know what, Miss Menz, that's going to cost you? $1,036. That's what that's going to cost you. Okay. Posting that thing, accusing him of sexual harassment, and then lying to me. I'm not and lying, telling, but... Telling me. Consider us gagged. Number nine, watch your mouth. She told people she wanted to beat me up. The girl that sued me was really problematic, dramatic. I now live in a place by myself. I pray for her every day and I hope that she does get better. A momentary dispute between plaintiff Raven Miyamoto and Daisha Williams threatened to bore the judge to death, but then one of them gave her the out she needed. In response to Williams's testimony, Miyamoto decided it was totally cool to call BS and she didn't use the acronym. What, what did you say? I said bull Bye. Case is dismissed. We're done. Judge Judy immediately dismissed both of their cases, leaving one stunned and the other refusing to leave because she had a countersuit. The judge really doesn't care for entitled young people in her courtroom. Maybe she's biased, but these two litigants didn't do much to change her opinion. If you don't know where you are, that's your problem. Goodbye. Your Honor, excuse me, step out. Goodbye. Number eight, bail denied. First, you said that the bond which was owed is $4,786. If I believe any of this baloney, then this page that you gave me from a telephone number that is non-existent in this country, which says that the current balance is $1,588. Even Judge Scheindlin would probably admit she can generally tell what her own verdict will be even before she steps into the courtroom. Cases where someone owed money and didn't pay it are often pretty open and shut, but this one, where a man bailed out his ex-wife after she was arrested for a probation violation, actually had a plot twist at the end. Could you read out this phone number? 714-7714. It's not in this country. <laughs> I don't know what country it's in. <laughs> the plaintiff provided a number for the bail bondsman he supposedly paid, but the judge called it, revealing it to be an inoperable international one. It's an unexpected turn of events to be sure, and his face when she tells him he's not getting any money is priceless. We're both obligated to pay it. I'm going to have to pay it myself. Sure. Well, let me tell you. All no, I want no, her to do no, is pay No, Mr. Lebrecht, you're not it's... going to pay it yourself for your child who is now in jail. You know who's going to pay it? Taxpayers. We are. Number seven, pouring bleach. Here's a classic Judge Judy case that shows how much more tolerant the judge used to be. Cases are decided by evidence. Cases are decided by the kinds of evidence that are admissible in court. Former lovers are in court over a case of bleached clothes. Apparently, the result of the defendant finding out the plaintiff was cheating on her. Despite thinking the defendant was probably guilty of ruining the plaintiff's clothes, the judge couldn't rule against her due to a lack of concrete evidence. My problem is she may have threatened you. She may have said she was going to do nasty things. She may have abused the telephone and called you numerous times. That still doesn't place her in his apartment damaging his property. This one is more unexpected in retrospect. Later cases with similarly unruly courtroom behavior would likely see her ruling based on that as opposed to evidence alone, perhaps skewing things in a different direction. Tell them goodbye. Goodbye. Parties are excused. You may step out. We're done. Come back when you can learn to behave. Number six, disruptive defendant. 
Here's another surprising example of the judge ruling against her personal feelings about litigants and honoring the evidence presented. The landlord being sued in this case kept interrupting Judge Judy and the plaintiff, speaking out of turn and being generally annoying. Schneiderman. Oh, I'm sorry. Shut up. I'm sorry. You keep saying you're sorry. You can't control yourself. Oh. Are you on some kind of medication that you can't control yourself? No, I'm asking you a serious question. She was bursting at the seams every time the plaintiff said even the most innocuous thing. Officer Bird even had to tell her to be quiet because she couldn't do so, even while she was winning the case. Sorry. Is this a picture of the bathroom that was in your room? Yes, the only bathroom. I don't care if it's the only bathroom. She said it was the only bathroom in the ad. Oh, the ad says sure. that there is one bathroom. The ad says that you can use another bathroom outside that's in the pool area. Put your hand down. It's actually amazing that the judge didn't rule against her just to prove a point, and never one to let a litigant wonder how she's really feeling. Judge Judy basically tells her that. Very carefully. I would love to rule against you because you are one of the most annoying people that I've had to deal with all day today. I find it difficult because for 200 bucks in Beverly Hills, I think he got a reasonable accommodation. If he didn't like it, he was returned most of his money. Number five, super seriously. When Judge Judy lays down the law, it can put the fear of God into anybody. Case in point, plaintiff Shaughnessy Fay, who was suing his former friend and landlord for a wrongful eviction. Stop. I'm almost finished with you. You have to understand that. If you can't control yourself in here, I have no patience for that, I'm too old. The judge grew impatient when the plaintiff couldn't stop interjecting. She actually did him a favor by dismissing the case without prejudice, but he couldn't believe it. How could she turn him away when he acted completely disrespectful in her court? You're gone, goodbye. You take your case back to the small claims court where it came from, do you understand? Seriously? No, not seriously, super seriously. His disbelief and her instant reply were one of the moments that make Judge Judy so reliably entertaining. Call the police on the 13th. Shh, shh. There's no question out there. The look of absolute disdain on Faye's girlfriend's face will forever be the cherry on top. You live with him full time? Yes. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Number four. Horse people. You made one payment mm -hmm. of one hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and you sold the horse to her for fifteen hundred dollars, which means she owes you fourteen hundred dollars. Yes. This plaintiff was expecting to recoup money she spent on a defective horse. However, the judge was more concerned for the defendant, who sold her the horse and was not paid in full. When the judge ruled against the plaintiff and also made her pay the remaining balance, the litigant nearly doubled over right there in the courtroom. Even the defendant couldn't believe she just won. We're done. Thank you. How does I excuse when they step out? I just... Oh. The audience watched, straining not to laugh as the plaintiff leaned over her podium in horror. She was either expecting to win this case or the first ever Emmy Award for outstanding performance by a court show participant. Acting is about leaving everything behind and becoming something completely new. Nailed it. Number 3. A $5,000 Haircut if there's one thing Judge Judith Scheinlin can't stand, it's cases that waste her time. Hope you don't use that against me. No, I'm going to hold your lawsuit against you because it's stupid. Well, to me, it's personal, and if you it's got a bad haircut, I'm sure you would be happy. It's stupid. Your lawsuit's stupid. At first glance, a plaintiff suing a hairstylist for $5,000 over an unsatisfying $10 haircut seemed exactly like the kind of thing that would annoy her. And she had no qualms about letting him know how ridiculous the ordeal was. Only thing is, this is a television courtroom, so we actually have fun doing sometimes ridiculous cases, which I'm sure is the reason you came here. The plaintiff being a lawyer himself only hurt his case. His being nearly bald anyway probably didn't do him any favors either. The most shocking part comes at the end, though, when the judge almost happily ordered the defendant to refund him the cost of the haircut. At that point, it was almost more of an insult to him, given the astronomical amount he was asking for. I don't think you're cute. I'm not trying to be Great. cute. You're Good. trying to be cute. Good. You are cute. <laughs> Mr. Campos, Mr. Campos, you are absolutely correct. That's why I have the job and you get $10. And that's the judgment of the court. Goodbye. Number two, mouth open. Judge Judy is often annoyed, but she can be downright savage when she's in the right mood. Your car hit his car. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to figure that out. Believe me, I'm not a genius. For much of this case, defendant Reginald Burkett's mouth was hanging open. He couldn't believe the plaintiff thought their car accident was his fault. 
Well, Judge Judy could. She laid out her facts as she saw them, and Burkett couldn't seem to rein in his complete and utter shock. This is the front of your car. Close your mouth, so just say yes or no. This is the front of your car. That's the front of my car, car. yes, The front of your car hit the back of his car. Unless his car was sliding along... His mouth was so open, he looked like he was catching flies. In one of the judge's most out-of-pocket moments over 25 seasons, she realized explaining this to him was not going to work, so she just opened her mouth and imitated him. Even as she was rendering her verdict, he still didn't seem to get it. It's clear from the evidence that you hit him, sir. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $250. We're done. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Tupperware Lady I'm not interested. Okay. Just get to the so point. So I said, look, if I don't get my Tupperware back, I'll just take it off my rent. And she said, well, don't you dare! And she threw her blankets off her, with which every morning... Just a second, are you telling me you went into her bedroom? Yes. Yeah. Plaintiff Karina Roy's legendary testimony about an argument that started over misplaced Tupperware may have cemented her in the Judge Judy Hall of Fame as the most bizarre litigant. Her reenactment of the argument was an unhinged piece of performance art. As you can imagine, the judge didn't much care for her over-the-top theatrics. In fact, she accused Roy of being unstable. Anybody that walks into a bedroom, somebody sleeping in their bed, to ask for two pieces of Tupperware and start an argument with them while they're in bed over two pieces of Tupperware isn't too stable. However, you might be surprised to know that Roy, aka the Tupperware lady, actually won her case. Judge Judy did believe the plaintiff was entitled to a partial amount of her lawsuit and awarded her $199.92 and the return of some property. Thank you. You want to give it back a bear? Certainly. Perfect. Bird, would you take care of the bear and the cup? Sure. Parties are excused. You may step out. Which of these unexpected verdicts was your favorite? Let us know in the comments. You keep saying I'm sorry. I did and you keep talking. When, when, I you, could, when I could, could interject. You, when you couldn't, never. Not unless I ask you a question. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.